with the table. I'm Amy. I'm Steve. I'm Mark. And today we're going through my top 30 games of all time. We're going through number 30 to 21. Today, we're going to start with number 30. Number 30. And in 30th place is Escape the Dark Castle. That's the black and white one. And it's a local designer, isn't Theme it? Board, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's in this spot because I, I wanted it to make the top 30 because I really, I highly rate it as a game for multiple reasons. One of them being its two player functionality is really exceptional. Um, I kind of had a games night a little while ago where not a lot of people turned up and then people that did turn up had to go home early and there were just two of us. And actually Escape the Dark Castle was brilliant just to carry on playing, get us through the night because it was still, it still functioned just as well as it should. Two player. Oh, so it scales really well. Yeah, across the, across so the range. well, so well. I just, I, it really astonished me and I thought it deserved mention for its two player kind of playability because okay. I don't have a lot of two-player games that I really love and there might not be any others on this list now I think about it. So I think this one is my two-player game so, entry. So you really like it because you can play with a lot of people but if you want to be going to play two players but don't want a two-player specific game, yeah, this works well for you. It works well, so it doesn't matter who turns up, it doesn't matter how many players we need. If you have more than the, what the base game caters for, you can just get expansions and... Jobs are good. Yeah, it sells quite well in the cafe. It's got this kind of weird black and white only art, and it's Nothing. a bit more. Not, not, it's not even morbid. It's just no. It's just it's it, artistic. It, it, yeah. It's really nice. I, I actually really like it. I, I think it's it's jarring, and I think that works with the theme. And I think it just the whole thing just it, it's a nice package. It works. It works. Number twenty nine. Next is King of Tokyo. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> I was worried that yeah. I like them like me. Um, yeah, I mean, some people might argue with me on this, this one that it shouldn't be in a top 30 games of all time, but it's, it's pure simplicity. I love it. I could just play it for hours because I don't really need to concentrate that much. It's, what, it's a game that I still thoroughly enjoy. I do prefer it to King of New York. I agree. I um, think so too. I, I've sometimes had mixed opinions from friends on that one, um, but I really, really like King of Tokyo. I've got the older edition. There was like a reprint yeah, recently, wasn't the new, there? the new art style version, which is very I, similar. It's but, very similar, yeah. but they've got some new characters bunged in there, yeah. and I'm not mad at that. I quite like them. So I just like that it's it's just simple. It's just a, it's a dice rolling game. Mm. That's it. I think when you're out, it doesn't hurt too bad. You can try and kill everyone and get and you, you yeah. get beaten back or something, or you can succeed or whatever. And you get that feeling of, I've just had a good chucking these massive dice. Yeah, well. it's really satisfying. And I don't think I mean, there's anything... Dice. Yes, good. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just a nice, light, easy game. And I, I, I think every game on this list... If someone said, would you like to play it right now? If I said, no, I'm very ill. I'm, I'm incredibly <laughs> unwell. I, <laughs> take me to a doctor because I love all of these games and King of Tokyo is one of those that I could just pick it up any time. I think I'd always happily play that as well. Yeah, I mean, you might say this shouldn't be on one of these lists and you're Ill like a lot of people would say that, but I, bet, I suspect if you got a large number of people and asked them, King of Tokyo appear quite a lot... It yeah. might not necessarily be high up on the list, but yeah. I think a lot yeah, of people it would appear. like yeah. it, and yeah. that may, it's got a mass appeal. It's easy. I think it's, it's nice guys. to play with different age ranges as well. Yeah, like if I was playing with a family, it would be easy because it doesn't really matter how old or young children are or how old or young adults yeah. are. I think the concept is fun. It's easy to understand, and there's nothing that's too out of reach. Which yachts, isn't it? And yeah. Oh, at least Yahtzee is a base, and that's a good, it's yeah. a better stand. version of Yahtzee. Yeah. Yeah. Yahtzee with fun characters and beating people up. Number 28. Quadropolis? Uh, yeah, I've played Quadropolis. That's the, for, uh, the t town building mark. Yeah, yeah you know it. Yeah, <laughs> it's this, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Quadropolis. Uh, I... Love the components. The moment I saw them, when I very, very first played, um, I fell in love with the meeple. So for that <laughs> moment alone, I, I bought it straight away. Um, I'd only played it a few times, 
but the more I've played it, the more I enjoy it. And it's really, really grown on me as a staple game in my collection. Um, I love that you can flip it over and have a more difficult yeah. game. So once you've mastered one and you're bored, you just move on and psh, you're happy again. I've never ever had someone struggle with it. Mm. Uh, it's really easy to teach and doesn't take a lot of time. And I think it's a really nice point accumulation game. Like, just, oh. So it, nice. It's like a bit like between two cities in yeah. terms of what you're trying to you're collecting yeah. sets of certain colours and putting them in certain places. But the action selection bit around you the can't side do with cross the architect with somebody else. Oh, where the architect is, you can't be looking at the architect. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So from the previous. Yeah. Yeah. And placement. then you put, you've got your one, two, three, and four, and you put them on one of the rows that hasn't been taken. You yeah. take yeah. the first, second, third, or fourth from that row. But as the game goes on, you're restricted. Someone can put the architect in a place where you can't get the tile you want based on yeah. what's free. Yeah, um, it's a really nice. It's a really nice strategic thing tacked onto a um, like a simple kind of set collection. Okay, it's not set collection, but it's, it's, you, you put them in the right set. Yeah, some of them are set. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what you are. Well. Yeah, yeah. So you've got your own city, or one and what, in each area, and you're trying whatever. to take from the board and place it in your city that then mm. makes it score and score well so you want to accumulate as many points as you can but you might be pushed into a corner where actually it's difficult and people are placing the architects in places where it's stopping you get what you want and it can be really really nice so i just i thought it deserved a spot number 27 zendo Ooh, a new, a new one. <laughs> I've played Zendo a lot recently, and I really, really have been enjoying it. It's, um, if you haven't heard of it, it's essentially um, a rule-finding game. It's a bit like Cryptid, where you've got um, a secret rule, one person knows it, they're building structures that are correct, that imply, the, that have the rule in place. And then the players are trying to figure out the rule by making similar structures. And then the person who knows what it is is going to tell them if they're right or wrong. There's a little bit more to it than that, but essentially it's highly tactical and it's really fun. I think the uh, I prefer it to Cryptid. I've played yeah. both of them quite a lot uh, over the last like, year or two. Um, and I, I'm starting to come to uh, Amy's point of view and Zender is a better game. Um, I think the, the the number of different possible rules in the game because oh, it's, there's, there's like seems 60, 70 cards but each card has a couple of choices you can make in it so you can have at least one of these and no more than two of these no three of these lying up or down or vertical or something all these different yeah. rules in the game um, it's great it's even got a little book about how you can as the rule setter because you're not trying to beat the players no. mm -hmm. um, about how they can strategically kind of a bit like uh, the mastermind in Tragedy of Lupin Yeah. A bit, a bit like how they can set players down the wrong path without making it too hard. Um, so that's really nice. I think every time I've played um, in the cafe, people have come along and been interested. And because it's quite a high player game, I think it does like up to seven players or something like that, seven or eight players. Play I mean, realistically, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. I've just been like, take a seat, let's go. I will teach you how to play. And it doesn't really matter when people kind of insert themselves into the game. I generally prefer capping it for people and all given the three others. Yeah. I think that's yeah. my, that's my, I think with too many players, it takes too long. Oh, you've worked out the rule, but you've got to wait. Wait until, until it's the your turn. Yeah, I agree in that regard, but it's a nice way to be able to think about, well, we can start this game and if Sarah's late, it doesn't matter. She can yeah. just pop in. So yeah, it is a game you can leave, leave and come back leave in without back ruining in. the game. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't spoil anything. Have you yeah, played it? Yeah, I've played yeah. lots of yeah, times. I, it's I very like popular it. at the moment. You prefer it to Cryptid? It's quite, yeah, definitely prefer it. Mm. Well, it's, the learning curve's much nicer. It's yeah. less, less yeah. steep. Yeah, it's not or, steep. You've also got the advantage, well, less steep also because you can just watch a few people take their actions yeah. and just go, oh, I understand what they're doing now. I understand yeah. what the difference yeah. between the two quitting types is. And you've and you got can, the easy, medium yeah. and hard cards. So you can start easy and then everyone goes, oh, that was easy. Let's go hard. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh. <laughs> take you the odd ones that are re really obvious that you don't get. And yeah. every, nobody gets yeah. And it goes round. Like, and like, why are you not getting it? Yeah. It's quite no obviously this. No, it's just no reds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was like, uh, nothing, no reds. No reds standing on yeah. end. It's like, it's only one rule. <laughs> <laughs> Number 26. Mysterium. Ooh. Um, old not one old, but an older game. It's a slightly older yeah. game, but I still get so much play out of it. I have some very arty friends, and it appeals to us 
it's it's got a really high player count which i love because if again too many people turn up uh luckily you can usually crack out a game of mysterium i also think it is really good for different age ranges um i've played a similar game recently obscurio and i think i still just about prefer mysterium but we'll see what happens next year when i've had a few more plays of obscurio <laughs> see if it replaces it or not we'll see because it is very similar and made by the same company too yeah, it's got this. It's got that wacky Dixit style art to it. Mm. Um, Love it. Love I've it. played Obscure as well, but they're both. They're, I mean, they both fill a similar. They're, they itch. tick a similar box. It's whether yeah. you want to be fully cooperative or not. I think as to whether you which one you prefer. Yeah, I do like the cooperative nature. I'm not generally the biggest fan of cooperative games because I feel I find them all a bit lackluster at the end of the game. I'm always like, oh yay, we've done so well, and then oh, okay, we won now. Yeah, I suppose when you've got a traitor, you've got two games in one. You've got the game itself, mm. and then you've got a yeah. working out the traitor. Or if you're the traitor, you've got the game itself and trying to wreck everyone else. Yeah, I did have a good time playing Obscurio, but it didn't meet the list because I've just the amount of play I've got out of Mysterium. In comparison, obviously Obscurio is quite new. We'll see how it goes, but I just really like Mysterium at I think, the moment. I think still. Mysterium is probably the one I'd pick if I was playing with casual gamers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's why I get so much play out of it, because it's something I can play with my family and things like that who aren't really gamers so it's something that gets a lot of play really yeah for me mysterium's dropped off as time's gone on yeah maybe i i don't know maybe i just played it enough but also i still think i preferred maybe it's because i preferred it first but i preferred the polish version i played first the mysterium to, and I, the mysterium. Oh, yeah, yeah to the current version i'd actually i less like the who do i think is going to do well i think it adds it adds unnecessary rules yeah i preferward mm. the Purer. I'm yeah, just I, trying I, to get my, I think I, I don't need that. that. In a three-player game. game, you don't play with those anyway. Yeah. So there, yeah. there's ways. I mean, obviously, you yeah. just don't play I mean, with yeah, it. It, it, wouldn't, not, it wouldn't affect the not. game. No, no, not at all. Because you've got to say, I think you're going to get this wrong, and it doesn't yeah, feel very uh, cooperative. I think the cooperative nature of it comes when you know when you just need to bump yourselves up the thing. Yeah. Somebody does it wrong on purpose, okay. and then you just vote in for it. So that's all we do anyway. Cheat. Sounds like playing the game. Number 25. Coyote. Yeah. Oh, I love Coyote. <laughs> I have never not laughed in a game of Coyote before. I've never not laughed watching people play it, Coyote. But that's why it's so good. It's a game where even if you're out, it's so hilarious to watch because you know and they don't know. And it's hilarious that you know and they don't. And you just sit there laughing at them or messing with them. And it genuinely makes a really for a really good game. It's... I think Steve said it says it almost every time he teaches it to somebody new. It's a brilliant game just to sit and watch. Yeah, it's the best game to watch when you've been knocked out or not playing. Yeah. Yes. So although it has player elimination, which I usually very much don't like, I like this game a lot because of the interactions. Because the interactions are so interesting, it doesn't matter that you're knocked out because it's still fun. And because you've got three lives, so you've got your tomahawks in your band, it's not it's not as damning when you're out because no. you, you're not out yet. And even when you are eliminated entirely, often it's quite close between people then going, beep, 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 they're out, they're out, they're yeah. out. Um, or you're having fun watching anyway because it's just such a silly game and you're, you're re realising how tactical you can be with your manipulation. Yeah, I think sometimes as well, elimination games, it's all your own fault if you're out. Generally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, unless the person to the front of you has got it exactly right. <laughs> Even then, you could say one higher and not get called out. Yeah. It's nearly always your own fault. Whereas some elimination games, someone's just knocked you out because, well, they had to. Yeah. Um, so this feels, feels a bit fairer and it's still just fun. It's a bit of fun. We often play two or three games in a row of this. Yeah. So if you're knocked out, you know there's another game coming on yeah. in a few minutes. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of those games that's lasting the test of time if you know what I mean it keeps coming back you might go away for a few months but you know that you will be playing this again it's not one of those games that's just gonna not get played again I think it's... the most frustrating thing is that I can't get a copy <laughs> yeah I was gonna ask actually do you ever see it getting reprinted oh, I don't I'd love it to be reprinted but I, I think they would retheme it I don't know what theme would suit it better but, I, but exactly I think it would require a retheme because of sensitivity reasons more likely yeah I mean I've seen multiple publishers publish it over the years I wonder yeah. all for that thing because I've seen there's multiple versions of it out there that I've mm. seen but yeah. yeah I don't know when it will get reprinted uh, I don't know the last time it was printed was about 8 years ago maybe yeah. 7 or 8 years ago I would just love it but yeah nobody yet has picked up that gem and either attempted to retheme it or just go for the go with the flow again and just 
reprint, please reprint comedy. <laughs> anyone's watching there that can make that happen, do it. <laughs> we'll all buy a copy. <laughs> Number 24. Next up is Entropy, or Heil, <laughs> in brackets. <Ooh. laughs> I have to do that every time I put out the name on the thing. Entropy, Heil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every time. Every yeah, time. It's otherwise <laughs> yeah. known as Heil. Um, probably my favourite abstract game. Um, I think this is the highest technically, like, just themeless abstract on the list. Um, I love the way it plays. I think it's really tactical. It gets my brain going. I haven't played it as much recently, but it still definitely deserves to be here. Um, I think I'm just running out of people to play with. <laughs> You've got too good for people. To no, no, no. It's just I usually play with Steve, yeah. and now we don't work on similar Same shifts day. as much. Or oh, it's too busy. Or it's I mean. just too busy, um, so we don't get to play as much anymore. So, um, yeah, but honestly brilliant abstract game it's just so much fun it's i think it's my favorite out and out abstract it's the uh the difference between you playing two sides so you play the game twice this side and then you swap over and you've yeah. got that you've just got to try and score the best you're always going to score something and the, the person trying to block you scoring is trying oh this gives them three points this gives them four but this gives it this threatens that so maybe i need to block this here um there's a bit of luck in what calls you pull out of the bag but a good player will beat a bad player always i think the really interesting thing about entropy as well is that it um, there's always that chance that you could beat somebody. Even if you have an absolutely mm. cracking score, I've never ever seen somebody have like a perfect score because I don't think such a thing particularly exists. Um, no, I don't think... I mean, the perfect score is about 700. Like. Yeah. It was, <laughs> literally, the other person would have to not be playing. Yeah. So it would be almost impossible. And I think that that brings an element of wanting to play on. Whereas some abstract games you get to a certain your point you're like i've lost and you're just kind of like do i want to carry on playing because i can see that it's very clear that i cannot recover from this in entropy there's always recovery because you play an entirely separate game for your go as such and so i think that diminishes that feeling of Oh, I've lost. So, so you, you, you're not a fan of this, are you, Mark? Is it because no, I don't mind it. I, I, it's going to be on the longer side, though, for me, for two, yeah, two is abstract because you do have to swap the side, and there is a lot of thought involved. If it's you, not that there's loads of actions, but the thinking time. That's the reason I don't really play it I think so much. It plays in about if you're both thinking, it plays in about fifty minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which uh, for that sort of game is a little bit on the longest. Side. Yeah, yeah it's not. Like, I'm not against it. I know you really like it's in your top five, was it last year? Uh, or what's... They're about, it's in my top ten. So yeah. it's, it's there about number six, maybe, I think, yeah. last time okay. I did the list. So yeah, yeah I, that, I really rate it. I don't mind it. It's just, yeah, it, for an abstract, it's a little bit too long for me. But it is, but I appreciate it. It's a very good game. And the best thing about it is the fact that you do t to play two sides there, yeah. rather than just being, I'm competing with you in the same game. Like right now, I'm yeah. Playing, you've, you've got different, two different games. goals in the yes. game. Yeah, yeah it's good. Number 23. Deception, murdering Hong Kong. Yeah, uh, yeah, we agree with you there, Raymond. That is a very good game. I know, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, it, there's a lot of different elements to the game when you think about it. Yeah. But in, in its core, it's a social deduction game. And it is a good one if you've never played it. And I, what surprises me is the amount of people who have never played this. Mm. It's excellent. I can't even... I'm trying to think of something to compare it to because the explanation's a bit long, but it essentially... Uh, it's like Avalon, but with you've, you've got some reason to accuse people. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's, there is a murder and an accomplice and you've got all that, everyone close your eyes business. Um, but there is a, the murderer has to kind of say, oh, it's these two and pick some things in front of them that everyone then has to deduce. And then there's a forensic scientist who knows the answer, but they can't speak. They've got to communicate through things. Um, but the reason I really like this is that when you're accusing someone, you've got reasons to do so. You're not just saying, "Oh, you always lie." Yeah, yeah. yeah you're yeah. not just you're not just trying to yeah. outlie someone because because you've got items and you've got murder weapons and things never... in front of you. Like Steve says, yeah. there is always a reason. It's oh, you've got the battery and the children's toy, and and they link to these clues we've been given, rather than just like you say, just wildly accusing people for like no real reason. Yeah, like people who, are, who struggle more with social deduction games, you'll go, you're lying, and they'll they will freeze yeah. because like 
you're attacking me directly. They can't yeah. necessarily initially from straight up. They feel like it's they take it too personally. Well, but it really, you're actually yeah, accusing the yeah. cards you've got in front of them, and you go, "Well, yeah." The number of times yeah, yeah, you, go, right, yeah. you go, "Yeah, mm. yeah. you're right." It could, a lot yeah, of times it could be me. Yeah, but also, and then try and redirect. I can't tell you it isn't me because I agree. I look dodgy too. Yeah, but then one of the mechanics as well means that you always go around the table before new clues arrive you go around the table and you get everybody's opinion and they you can't talk you can't question them you can't mm, berate them yeah. for anything they give their honest opinion on what they think's going on and what are possibilities and that again stops you from going it's so and so because of this point blank like they, they just you're just absolutely set on it, it could, yeah. you deliberate often yeah it's a very good game i prefer it to all the Everyone close your eyes, wake up, kind of have a lot yeah. of resistance. Yeah, yeah I would yeah. always choose to play those. Yeah. those. Yeah. It's a bit of a longer game, some might argue. Oh, yes, it is. It's so not, think, not really a filler, is it? No, so I think if you wanted to do a social deduction game that was a bit of a filler, you probably might go for something like Avalon because it probably takes less time, but I much prefer, I'd much prefer spend the extra <laughs> you've been, 10 minutes. You'd be in long games of Avalon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not bad at Avalon, so. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is uh, actually outed. Outed it for me. This yeah. and Secret Hitler have outed Avalon for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Number 22. Scoville! <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what it is about chili farming, but I really enjoy it. Um, I really like the way that the game has... Um, different ways that you can win. I always find I'm employing a slightly different tactic really going for the chilies, trying to upgrade faster. Um, I, yeah, it's just, I really enjoy it. I don't really, can't really pinpoint it. Um, I know that Miles would really like it as well, Nathan, because he, he <laughs> um, he's, come on, he, he struggles with his colour blindness with yeah. Scoville and it is a bit unavoidable in a game like this, but it was so funny watching him play this game. I wasn't even playing with him, but I felt yeah. like I was because I was watching him. It was hilarious. So the, mechan the mechanic is like a mixing colours thing, so to create a green chilli, you need a red, uh, so not red, a blue and a yellow chilli, so like, mixing paint and stuff like that and there's n there's a lot of ways to me to get color blindness in games but just not in this game they no. kind of vary the height of the chilies but you spend the whole game saying what color is that <laughs> which one's red uh, are these the same colour and that sort of thing so was, he thought it was funny too it was, we weren't being cruel it was really um, really funny I think he's played some games where the colour has affected him and he's really hated the game but he doesn't actually hate Scoville no. so that's an so, indi yeah. indicator of how I know, good he's, it is he's going he's gonna to agree with me on this one I hope yeah. <laughs> I don't mind this I think up I've played it quite a few times it is one of those games that has come out regularly probably because it takes more than four well mm. which not yeah. many like Euros of this style probably do as well it's one of the few euros that takes six that doesn't slow down for six, I think. No, and the board size is still good, yeah. so you don't struggle for space with six, but with three, let's say, you don't, you're, you're not all spread out, so you don't really see each other because you need the benefits of being people, close yeah. to people. So you can't just do your own thing because you'll no. lose. You, you yeah. never, you'll, you'll never, never do you'll well. Never will. No, there's yeah. no, you need to be close to people, but I don't find that in a six player game you're in each other's way too much. So it really scales well. And the mechanics are really sound. The components are just stunning. I love me some sparkly chilies. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's got that interesting turn order mechanic about whether if you bid a lot of money, you generally want to go first or last. Because if you go first, say you do that last, and you do that first. Um, and if you haven't got the money, well, money's points, so you can say, well, I'm going to bid nothing, and I'll go somewhere in the middle. I'll still get to do everything everyone else does. But sometimes you desperately want to do that first, or you desperately want to do that last. Um, so that's got it gives mm. you nice decisions in the game. Yeah. Number 21. Six nymphs. Or however you want to pronounce it. Because is it, is it nymphs or nimit or? Uh, it means six I don't want, I think, doesn't it? Or something like that. Six I don't know, <laughs> but it's real good. <laughs> um, yeah, so essentially it's a little. I would, I would want to say math game, but it's not really. It's just you have a pile of six cards and you're trying not to go bust. So a card always goes onto the pile that um, yours is higher than but closest to. So a 12 would go on a eight if it was on the board. Um, and you're trying not to score any points. <laughs> That's the crucial part. Yeah. Um, so the, on the cards, there are some bull's heads and um, each head is worth a minus point, essentially. And if you go bust, so if you put the sixth card on a pile, you take the whole thing and your card replaces the ones that were there to start a new pile. Yeah, 
I like it. It's a surprisingly stressful game <laughs> as you sort of, as it starts falling out and you go. I'm gonna get done in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know when straight away yeah. he goes, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and you've got the six. So and you're like, oh. Nothing I can do, nothing I can do. When do I want to play it and go bust? When yeah. do I want. I quite like the decision when you uh, when you have to take one of the, when you've got a choice of piles, when you play the lowest card lower than anything that's there, you have a choice of piles. You can then look around and see if there's anyone you can do in. I yeah. quite like that in games mm. like that. Um, but another strength of this game, again, it's one of these games, it's a, it's a filler, it's a party game, not a party yeah, game, it's a no, filler, it's a but. Filler. Plays up to ten people. Oh, so good. Um, so you might not want to play it with ten, but you can play it with you seven can. or eight. Yeah. Um, I think I did play it with ten at a party once, which was really strange because I didn't expect it to appear mm. on the table, mm. and it didn't. Everyone loved it, and as the night went on, we just kept playing more. And then a couple of days later, people rang me like, "I found some six nymph cards in my pocket." And the, <laughs> the other day, um, I'll post them round, and I ended up people like posting six nymph cards in my door. So it was strangely, it worked as a party game because every. Everybody enjoyed it. It's really strange. Yeah, it's a good choice. Mm. And that was the first 10 of my top 30. So tune in next time for the next set of 10 again. And um, yeah, get ready for some more interesting entries. The game's only get better from here. <laughs> I hope so. Or oh, we're going the wrong way. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. We do appreciate it. If you do, click the, click the thumb. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about my choices because that would be really interesting. Do you think I'm wrong? That's fine. Let me know in the comments. <laughs>